listening. Whatever, but whatever you actually listen to, you're opening your heart up to. Did you hear me? Yeah. You can hear pastor preach. You can hear it. But not really be opening your heart and listening. But whatever you actually pay attention to, whatever you honor by giving your attention to it, I'm going to stop and actually take heed to and listen to that. You're honoring that as having authority to speak into your heart. And then, as a man thinks in his heart, so he becomes. Better watch who you're sitting around talking with. Better watch what you're listening to. Some people were very strong, very forceful, very emotional, very persuasive opinions, and still completely wrong. Did you hear me? Meditate on that. Just because it's persuasive, just because it may be forceful, just because it may sound good, just because you might feel it, doesn't make it God at all. It could be a seducing spirit. Or it could be what the Bible calls the doctrine of devils. Literally, teachings from hell. Why am I saying all that, Pastor? What, what, what is that all about? Because of this. As a man thinks in his heart, so he becomes. So is he. Whatever you believe in your heart, through your ears, through your eyes, you will become that. Whatever you listen to, faith comes by hearing. So what you're hearing will build faith. Or it will build faith in the devil, which is fear. But what is going in your ears and going in through your eyes settles in your heart. Your heart, according to Mark chapter 4, remember, is the soil of your soul. It's the dirt of your spirit that God puts his seed into, causes it to grow up, and manifest the fruit of the kingdom of heaven and the fruit of being like Jesus, or you can sow demonic seeds and it will sow the seeds of fear and the fruit of hell, fear, sickness, and disease springs up, and the kingdom of darkness manifests in your life. Can I hear an amen? amen? Be careful what you hear. because Just because it sounds good, looks good, may even impress your heart, doesn't mean it's of God. Did you hear me? Amen. Now just think about it for just a minute. Out, out there in this church, think about it. Whose opinion matters the most? Everybody here is saying God. Then who should you listen to the most? See, when it comes to this area of sickness and disease and healing, you'll heal, you will hear everything under the sun. God broke my leg to teach me something. I've heard good, and yeah, folks, I, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not picking on anybody. I'm not putting anybody down. I am not judging anybody. And how do I keep from judging somebody? Make sure that I'm, my attitude, my mannerisms, my opinions, my decisions are 100% God. Then if somebody takes offense, they're, they're offended with what the Bible says, not what Pastor T.C. says. Amen? Amen. Did you hear me? Amen. So if you have a problem, then you have a problem with the Word of God. You don't have a problem with me. I'm trying to submit to His opinion. I heard a great man of God, and I love him with all my heart, say that God gave him cancer, put him flat on his back with cancer, so that he'd finally listen and obey a different direction in his calling. And that almost sounds good. God's been telling you to go into the mission fields of Bolivia for 10 years and you wouldn't resign this church, so God just gave you cancer to make you go to the hospital so you could do nothing but sit there and be honest before him and God. Wow. What'd you do? Well, I got out of the hospital and I went to the mission field. 
see how God works in mysterious ways? None of that's a biblical. And you have to settle in your heart right now. The Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and the Word agree. God's never going to tell you by the Spirit something that doesn't line up with the Word. Amen. Amen. So many people say, well, I know what the Bible says, but I heard it in the, the Holy Ghost told me. Holy Spirit's not going to say one thing that contradicts the Word. Period. Say it right now. If it's not in the Bible, it's not the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God comes as a teacher, guide, and comforter who comforts you while you walk in the good fight of faith and He teaches you and guides you in the life of faith. What's He teach you? Understanding of the Word so the Word can have power in your life. What's He teach you? Understanding of the Word reveals the full majesty of Jesus hidden in the written Word so that you can walk like Jesus, talk like Jesus, see like Jesus, think like Jesus, live like Jesus, heal like Jesus, and use authority like Jesus, because you are the body of Christ. Would the body do one thing different than the rest of the body? You're going to have, here's my body, but this arm is just kind of, you know, it doesn't agree with the rest of the word. This, this body came to earth and healed. This, this part of the body doesn't believe in healing. What would you call that body? Sick. There's something wrong with my arm if I can't control the flow of the rest of the body. It's called epilepsy or spasms or just not normal. Would you? I'm not kidding. I'm not trying to be funny. The rest of my body is, is, is functioning, walking, and this arm just does just I want to go over here and the arm's trying to go over there. I want to sit down and the arm wants to stand up. I want to stand up and the arm wants to sit down. I want to go to sleep and the arm is wide awake. See, we have a problem here, right? What's it called? Part of the body not agreeing and harmonizing with the rest of the body. We are the body of Christ. Isn't that what the Word says? Amen. Can I have an, an amen? amen? Is that what the Word says? Amen. amen. If we're the body of Christ, isn't the body of Christ going to be flowing with the head, which is Christ? Amen. What did Jesus do when he was on earth? We're going to look at that. What did Jesus say when he was on earth? We're going to look at that. What should the body be doing? The exact same thing the body was doing when it was here in Christ. Amen. True? Now, in 1 Peter chapter 5, look what it says here. Hallelujah. And look at verse 8. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, now what, what's he say? Your what? Your what? Come on, say it like you're Pentecostal. Adversary. Your Adversary, what's adversary mean? Enemy. Your foe, the one that's against you. Your adversary, who? God. Your enemy, God. Is that what it says? What's it say? Your adversary, your enemy, the foe that's against you, the devil. You've got to settle that right in your heart right now. That's what I'm talking about. Well, God broke my legs. God gave me cancer. God did this to teach me, to instruct me, to get me to obey. Every bit of that's doctrines of hell, teachings of demons to keep you confused so you never know what to fight or what to submit to. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever heard that phrase? You're your own worst enemy. You know, you can lock, you can put bars on the door, you can lock, put bars on the windows, you can have floodlights outside, and you can still be crazy inside and burn your house down. Who is the who is the worst enemy of that household? The guy that lives there. Most people.
people, spiritually speaking, 